Over the course of the next three videos, we're going to take a look at the best cinematography in film, each focusing on a different time period. Starting off, we're looking at the 10 best uses of cinematography in film prior to 1970. Number 10, Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. What other film to start off our list from the first one to ever win the Oscar for Best Cinematography? Morneau's silent romantic drama was well ahead of its time in regards to its innovation with the camera, utilising frequent use of forced perspective and dolly shots to create greater depths when filming their vastly huge sets. Charles Rocher and Carl Struess worked alongside each other as the co-directors of photography on the film, each harnessing different cameras of their own choice to create an atmospheric and revolutionary picture. Number 9, Metropolis. Arguably the most famous German movie ever made, Metropolis took over 300 days to film on location at the UFA studio at New Babelsberg near Berlin. Released the same year as Sunrise, Metropolis was an equally groundbreaking movie that helmed the use of elaborate city models and over 30,000 extras. Celebrated for their contributions to filmmaking, cinematographers Karl Freund and Gunther Ritter focused heavily on the use of lighting to distinguish the upper class world above in comparison to the shadowy hell below that the workers were forced to endure. Number 8. Dr. Zhivago David Lean was the king of epics, and the unique look that his films amassed was solely thanks to his longtime collaborator Freddie Young, who during his career won three Oscars for Best Cinematography, one of which being for the film at hand. Come on. Featuring grand panoramas and sweeping wide shots, Dr. Zhivago's cinematography is ultimately just as inspiring as the central story, and for the most part, the Russian backdrop is allowed to speak for itself, thus heightening the grandeur of the film. Number 7. The Searchers A film that was completely overlooked during the awards circuit, The Searchers has unfortunately become a rather underrated film, generally more known by those who are cinema savvy. However, when reflecting back on John Ford's western masterpiece, the stunning cinematography becomes apparent. Two shots that always linger in the mind are the opening and closing vistas that almost act as bookmarks to the film, the latter of which features a silhouetted John Wayne as he walks off, probably one of cinema's most resounding closing views. Number 6, The Knight of the Hunter. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. Originally shunned by audiences and critics alike, Charles Lawton's The Knight of the Hunter is now deservedly regarded as a masterpiece of American cinema. Cinematographer Stanley Cortez opted for an expressionistic look reminiscent of films such as the previously mentioned Metropolis, featuring a blend of oblique angles, hard shadows and high contrast black and white vistas. The Night of the Hunter's cinematography ultimately created an unsettling atmosphere with instances of surrealism thrown in. However, it was due to the film's psychopathic villain Harry Powell that these shots became so frightening. Don't never sleep. Number 5, Gone with the Wind. No list on cinematography is complete without a mention to the beautifully shot epic from 1939 from director Victor Fleming, whose use of saturated colours were equally utilised in his other film from the same year, The Wizard of Oz. Another film to feature a duo of cinematographers, Gone with the Wind's unique look gave the film a dated visual aesthetic reminiscent of the 1800s. Like The Wizard of Oz, the film used free strip technicolour alongside correction filters and coloured makeups to give it its famous vistas, thus producing one of the most stunning films hailing from the United States. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Number 4, The Third Man. Our second film noir on this list, Carol Reed's The Third Man utilised heavy use of hard light and high contrast to create the film's unique shots. With the vast empty streets and sewers of Vienna paving the stage for the actors, cinematographer Robert Kraska's abundant and skillful use of shadows and Dutch tilt shots earned him an Oscar for his efforts, and undoubtedly aided the film in winning the award for Best British Film at the 1950 BAFTAs. Yes, it's called The Third Man. A novel, Mr. Martins? It's a murder story. 
Number three, Citizen Kane. That's the way they want it. The people have made that choice. It's obvious the people prefer Jim Geddes to me. Citizen Kane, one of the most famous and arguably greatest American movies ever made, directed by then 25-year-old Orson Welles, features stunning noir-esque cinematography captured by the extremely talented Greg Toland. Sharing similar visuals to Toland's previous picture of a long voyage home from John Ford, Citizen Kane's visuals heavily utilised wide-angled lenses, hard side lighting and extreme deep focus shots to create the film's stunning aesthetic. Further optical effects were then used by compositing separate elements to create some of the famous deep focus shots. Charlie, you got other things to think about. Your little boy. You don't want him to read about you in the papers. There's only one person in the world to decide what I'm going to do, and that's me. Number two, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Stanley Kubrick has become one of the most influential directors to have ever worked in cinema, with films like The Shining, Full Metal Jacket and Paths of Glory boasting gorgeous takes with the abundant use of smooth tracking shots. However, it was the 1968 sci-fi masterpiece 2001 that truly caught our attention and has thus earned its place in our top 10 list. That's a very nice rendering, Dave. I think you've improved a great deal. 2001 will undoubtedly remain as one of the greatest science fiction films ever crafted, and the stunning visuals and mind-blowing effects are undeniably one of the key reasons for this, with huge soundstage sets that complement the general aesthetic. Al, I won't argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Dave, this conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honourable mentions that just missed the list. The Wizard of Oz. You have to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. You can be a wizard of the wizard of The Red Shoes. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Vertigo. Here we go. There. There. Now, I look up. To catch a thief. Ben Hur. Number one, Lawrence Farabia. Regarded by many as the finest British film ever made, Lawrence of Arabia supported these claims by boasting what is arguably the finest cinematography of any movie prior to 1970. Our second film from auteur David Lean and cinematographer Freddie Young, Lawrence of Arabia is arguably the crowning achievement in the long career of the duo, successfully blending shots that promote spectacle, adventure and characterisation. With some of the most exquisite wide shots to ever feature in a movie, Young's lingering cinematography and photographic grandeur garnered him a well-deserved win at the Academy Awards. Thomas! Thank you for watching. Are there any films that we missed? Leave your opinions in the comments below and subscribe for new videos.